The quarantine is real, but I've got something to keep you busy. Welcome to Life in My Shoes Reviews and Such. This week is a such. So like me, many of you are probably quarantined and you have this extra time that you previously spent out and about with people. Uh, may have been shopping, it may have been sporting events, it may have been eating out, and many of those activities have been canceled. Uh, if you're like me, you're probably even working from home. So in this new environment where we have this free time, I would hope that some of it is invested in your health, both physical and mental, uh, and another video can talk about some of that. But for today, I'm purely talking about your entertainment in some of that time that is now available. Specifically, I want to give you five recommendations of graphic novels that you can read during this time when you're isolated. These are kind of investments. They're not like a single book. It is just like a reading adventure that you can uh, enter into should you have access to these materials. So they're scattered all around my desk, so I will kind of be picking them up as we move along. Uh, the first one is Clandestine, which is a Marvel a book. I did a review of one of the graphic novels in this kind of larger series earlier. This is the original eight uh, issues uh, plus an X-Men uh, X Men Clandestine collection. It's a storyline that kind of travels through time a little bit. Um, fun. And then this is the subsequent Blood Relative um, that is was a new story that came out. So this is created by... Uh, written and drawn by Alan Davis, which is uh, probably best known for being one of the co-creators and the artist for Excalibur, the launch, the original launch at Marvel, uh, and has even uh, drawn some of the X-Men, has done some work with DC, has been all over the industry. Uh, but he created this probably, I would say, maybe in the early 90s, uh, and it originally ran, I want to say something like t 11 or 12 issues he left, I believe, at about issue eight. Uh, they continued on for a few more issues, um, but they have non-canonized those uh, additional issues. It's a fun romp, um, not to give too much away, but it's a family. Um, it's a family. Uh, the clan Destin, their last name are Destin. The father's name is Adam. He was a like a medieval uh, soldier, part of the uh, Crusades, and. Uh, freed a genie, ended up marrying the genie, and had a family of children um, that had these special powers. So throughout the years, the ages, Adam is long lived. Um, and so these children uh, are all special powered, the clan destined. Uh, so but what they don't realize, at least the youngest two, so we kind of see the story through the two youngest, uh, Rory and Pandora. What they don't realize is that they're all siblings because they are uh, they're such wide ages in the in the family um, that they see a lot of them as aunts and uncles, and they don't realize that they're all siblings. <clears throat> but it's a fantastic adventure. They get wrapped up in uh, some kind of sci-fi adventure, uh, but it's a fun read. It will keep you busy for a little while. Um, it's not a, a big thinking read. It's just fun, enjoyable, uh, and will keep you busy for a little bit. Uh, the next one uh, is Top 10 by America's Best Comics, which was produced by uh, Wildstorm Comics, part of DC um, that has now been dissolved. Uh, this is an Alan Moore. So Alan Moore uh, launched America's Best Comics with Wildstorm right before they were uh, purchased by DC um, and had this separate line, uh, Top 10, Tom Strong, Promethea, Tomorrow Stories, um, Terra Obscura, um, a few others. <coughs> but this is a fantastic, four, four different volumes. The first one um, is actually uh, top uh, Top 10 Volume 1 collects about the first six issues of the 12-issue limited series. Um, then Volume 2 finishes, finishes out. Uh, basically what this is, is uh, in a world of multi-dimensions, uh, this is a city that is populated by all superpowers, 
uh, of a variety. So this is a police force of superpowers that polices a city of superpowers. So what I would say, this is kind of an NYPD uh, with, with capes. Um, Characters are super creative. The scenarios are fantastic. It's n nothing as, as simple as you expect it to be. It's a fun adventure. You really get uh, to love the characters and really enjoy the storyline. I wish this had gone on for years and years and years. Uh, one of my favorite reads of all time. Um, then what came out, <clears throat> I believe this was next, uh, Smacks. <coughs> and this is uh, taking one of the characters from Top Ten, Jeff, Jeff Smacks and taking him back to his original environment. He lives, uh, was kind of like a, from a fantasy dimension. Um, so he was kind of like a knight or an ogre in this fantasy dimension. And it takes him back to kind of his origin, and he has to go back and kind of walk back through some of his history and uh, undo some things that he uh, didn't correct originally. Um, so this is uh, great. This is art by uh, Xander Cannon. Uh, where the uh, original series was by Gene Ha. <clears throat> Gene Ha is fantastic. Xander Cannon, uh, I believe, did inks or colors for the original. So very familiar with uh, the material. Fantastic read. Uh, definitely has to be part of that. And then the the last one, <coughs> and I believe this was the order they were released, is... Uh, 49ers, and this is basically a prequel. So what this is, is the creation of the city, which is called Neapolis. Uh, and this tells a little bit of the history. And one of the main characters is, uh, uh, I believe, called Jet Lad. And he becomes the captain of the police force in the original series. Um, so this is kind of the prequel, tells the story, tells some of the history of Neapolis. Uh, tell some of the history of some of the characters that you didn't get in the original series. So I would say this is a collective whole, the four volumes. I would definitely recommend that they are all read as part of the total experience. The next one is The Question. Um, so this is a DC series from, I want to say it's the 80s, perhaps into the 90s. Um, this is a six-volume set. Uh, I don't believe it's been released in any format other than the six volumes. It was something like a 32-issue series, something um, like that. Uh, it was written by Dennis O'Neill with art by Dennis Cowan. Um, this is a classic, so I would say this was uh, Vertigo Comics before Vertigo existed. So he is a um, Nick, <coughs> excuse me, Vic, Vic Sage, or Charlie. He has multiple names. Uh, is a news reporter in a rundown city called Hub City that has a lot of uh, crime, a lot of uh, just a lot of trouble. Um, you know, the police are bad, the politicians are bad, etc. So he's a reporter, and he kind of gets behind the scenes and solves problems in an alter ego called the Question, where he uh, wears a no face mask. Uh, he has a special smoke that makes the mask adhere to his face, changes the color of his clothes, changes the color of his hair. And then he goes out as this no face character and solves crimes and uh, kind of is fighting the underworld of this um, depraved city. Um, so a fantastic read. Um, very, It's more on the mature side of comics, um, but just a classic read. Uh, after the original series, I think they did a quarterly for a year or so. I wish they had collected that as well. And they've done a, a bunch of one shots since then. Uh, obviously, the question has gotten a lot more um, uh, notoriety in recent years. Uh, but a great read. The next series is Alpha Flight <clears throat> Classics. <clears throat> this is three volumes uh, that basically collects issue through issue 29 of the original Alpha Flight series, which launched in the 80s. So um, one of my favorite books of all time, I remember buying Alpha Flight number one, the original issue, on the way to sixth grade, walking to sixth grade, uh, stopping at a 7-Eleven, buying it, sneaking, reading it throughout the day of school. Um I love the series. I love the characters. They were introduced in uh, X-Men. 
<clears throat> in the 80s um, by John Byrne and Chris Claremont. This is a series that is uh, the, the characters were co-created by John Byrne and Chris Claremont. This is a series written by John Byrne, drawn by John Byrne. He, uh, <coughs> he takes it through, I think, issue 28. I think 29 is a transition to uh, Bill, Bill Mantlo with art by Mike Mignola. So what happened is at the end of this series, the art team from The Incredible Hulk at the time, which was Bill Mantlo uh, with art by Mike Mignola, traded with John Byrne, and John Byrne went over to Hulk, and they came over to Alpha Flight. So that kind of started a new era. But this collects the original series and the first uh, issue under the new uh, leadership. So a lot happens in these 28, 29 issues. There's a lot of character development, characters die, characters are revived, uh, etc. A lot is going on in here. This is fantastic. The premise of Alpha Flight is that they are Canada's premier superheroes. And um, they are, they start out the series uh, government funded, but in issue one, the funding is pulled. Uh, throughout the course of the overall series i think the original series ran 130 some issues uh and then they've had subsequent series launch after that i want to say they've gone in and out of uh, being government funded uh throughout the life of the series but this again is a, a 28 29 issue series uh with uh writing and art primarily by john byrne um great characters a lot of fun a lot of adventure a typical 80s uh, read. This is uh, just a fun read that gets you uh, a lot of the history uh, of the characters. So the original run had backup stories. So there was a primary story that would run at the beginning of the book, and then a backup story would tell the history of the characters because they were basically unknown with the exception of their X-Men appearance. So we get the history of all the characters um, and start creating some new history with them as well. So this is a fun read, uh, uh, fantastic. We'll take you a little bit of time, but it's definitely something that will be fun to occupy your time. Um, the last <clears throat> is what I will call uh, the Yurkovic verse. So this is uh, David Yurkovic. This is Lesson Heroes. Uh, Death by Chocolate and Altercations. So uh, David Yurkovic is an indie comic creator. So two of these I think are done by Top Shelf Comics, which are Death by Chocolate and Lesson Hero. Um, but he has kind of created this comic book universe. So this is him uh, doing the art. So he's written it and created the art. So uh, very offbeat. Um, the art I would say is an acquired taste. You could tell that as a writer, um, he is a student of uh, the genre of comics, um, and it just kind of comes out in a story. Uh, Altercations is, is a great example of that because it, it uh, tells stories throughout the eras of comic books. And again, these are characters in his universe. Um, and it just like he does such a good job on that. Um, Death by Chocolate, a super uh, interesting concept that um, and a little bit of a spoiler, the man, this man sweet falls in uh, to chocolate and basically becomes a man of chocolate. And so he is kind of a, an investigator with a partner and they kind of are investigating these unique scenarios. But in the end, he's made of chocolate and you would never think, ah, I would never as a traditional superhero comic reader, that wouldn't really resonate with me, but there's just something super unique about, um, about, uh, Yurkovic and all of his work. So I would say anything you can get your hands on, but specifically these three, Death by Chocolate, Lesson Heroes, and Altercations, if you can get your hands on them, these are fantastic reads. I think right now on Amazon, I am probably the lone reviewer of all three of these works, uh, which is a, a travesty that, um, that these works do not have more people reviewing them and recommending them. Because not only did I review them, I highly recommend all three of these. I would say this is a every year kind of read material, uh, regardless of the quarantine. But there you go. There are five separate uh, reading suggestions in the graphic novel genre. I will try to, as the week progresses, come back with a couple other suggestions for this quarantine. Uh, one being uh, maybe five movies or movie series or TV series that you can invest in during this time. 
Uh, I know I'm doing some binge watching of some television right now, uh, but some of these may be things you uh, are likely to own, but would be good to invest in. And then finally, five uh, books, just, uh, and these won't be, these will be more like uh, leadership, self-help kind of books uh, that I think would be good to invest in while you got the time, some extra reading um, and invest in your mental health. Uh, and um, that's probably it. I, I don't know that I'm going to recommend any specific exercises because I'm just working on that myself. But uh, in the end, we need to band together in this while maintaining social distancing uh, and do our best to survive. Look out for those around you that may need help. Reach out to your loved ones. Make sure that all of their needs are met. Until the next video, be safe and love one another.